Okay guys, huge treat for us today. We're joined by Mr. Vachelle, nice to see you, pal. Always great nice to be to here. So we have a, a brand new line of woods. Last year was a great year, ST190, the full range was, was a huge success. Mm -hmm. uh, in general, huge success for us in here. Um, I think over all of our testing, the, the product stacked up against literally everything in the marketplace, which is a huge, huge win for you guys. For sure, you know, we've been making steady gains on our woods over the last number of years yeah. and we've been putting a lot more resources behind them, a lot more uh, the actual dollars in terms of the head costs and making sure we're using the best materials, the yeah. best processes, really trying to put an emphasis on the performance of our woods. Mm -hmm. So with the ST180 to the ST190, you saw good performance gains. And now with the ST200 line, yeah. we're super excited about some of the things that are coming. I mean, it's kind of, it must be, you know, thinking about this in, in advance, knowing that we were going to be doing this today, I was thinking, you know, what was the process for, for you guys and, and taking a formula that was successful? Um, because I think probably up until now, there's been sort of, you know, drivers maybe haven't gotten the traction that ST190 got. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you get one that really the market grabs a hold of and goes, this is really good. Mm -hmm. This is this can compete against anything. And how far do you keep strain or how far do you stray from that formula because it's a winning one? It's a great question, you know, and it all comes down to the development time yeah. and how we're setting everything up. In years past, if you look back at Mizuno three, four, five years ago, you'd see alternating wood launch cycles. Sure. So you'd see yep. an MP product, a JPX product. Mm -hmm. And what that meant was the second you get a successful JPX product, for yeah. example, what's already been developed on its heels was an MP that was yeah. very, very different. So it really took a conscious effort from us internally, from our marketing side, from our development mm -hmm. side, from our engineering side, everybody to make sure that we're on the same page, trying to build a foundation, a platform for what makes a great Mizuno wood. Yep. So you really started to see that with the ST180 line, mm -hmm. and then the ST190 line was an improvement on that, yeah. and then the ST200 line, an improvement on that. So it's all about us just understanding what we're trying to do and how we're trying to grow a family and grow our reputation and really grow what the customer can expect from a Mizuno wood. Yeah, I mean, now probably the first time ever, you, you guys must be fairly confident that, that you can literally put someone top to bottom. You're exactly right. And you're, you're starting to see it a lot on our tour Definitely. staff as well. For years, we struggled with getting woods in play yeah. on tour. With the ST190, we got our first got win first in win, almost yeah. 20 years. That was a huge weekend. It was really day, cool. Yeah. Uh, Keith Mitchell playing the ST190, yeah. played phenomenal, great driver of the golf ball. Mm -hmm. That was awesome for us. But on top of that, we had a number of play every week. Yeah. And with early testing with this, I actually just spent the last couple of weeks down in South Florida testing mm -hmm. with some guys. Nice. I wouldn't be surprised to see seven to 10 Mizuno drivers in play in a given week coming forward, which is huge yeah, for us. Yeah, and I'm not, sure I'm, yeah, I'm not sure what that sounds like, you know, to the general consumer, seven to 10, and whether they, you know, whether they would look at that and go, that's not very many. Right. That's a lot of drivers. It's a lot of drivers. That is a lot. That's exactly right, especially in a world where it seems like, you know, there's a couple companies that really dominate sure. the wood world yeah, and it's almost like they're the default. Like yeah. if I'm going to get a driver, I'm going to go to these companies, I'm going to try these. The little guys really have always struggled to get any yeah. numbers aside mm -hmm. from just, you know, the one or two that maybe you are forcing a guy to yeah. play. With us, we've really been trying to make an effort to say, hey, if you want to be a Mizuno player, mm -hmm. let's test the whole bag and see what works. Yeah. And if you like it, come on, let's, let's be a part of this. Let's so. do it, exactly. So tell me a little bit about the, the, the player's reaction. So when they first saw the, the uh, ST200 line, mm -hmm. what was their sort of first thoughts? You know, the first thoughts, this always comes down to the look at a dress. Sure, absolutely. And with Mizuno, especially our players seem yeah. to be so picky. <laughs> like they really like to nitpick apart head yeah. shapes, face angles. Mm -hmm. So the look at a dress is very clean, very yep. classic. When you hold it down, it's a slight bit bigger than the previous, slight bit bigger than the ST190, right. just in terms of the actual footprint itself. But by no means is it a large looking golf club. No, so we not. have three models, the, one, uh, the ST200G, the ST200, and the ST200X. All three of these, it takes a pretty keen eye to recognize the difference yeah. at a dress, yep. but underneath there's a lot going on. So the cool thing was when we showed our tour staff, they looked at them and they, they all liked the look at a dress, but then when we flipped them out around underneath and we mm -hmm. explained the differences, you understood that there's three models that really could fit three different player types yeah. to really help expand and just dial in a fitting. And going from, we were just chatting about this before we, we turned the camera on, but mm -hmm. going from two models to three, 
is, is a huge difference. Yeah, it doesn't sound like a lot for the <laughs> consumer, just, okay, now you got a third one. Yeah. But what that allows us to do on the engineering side is make everyone that much more specific. Yep. What I mean is with, with the 190G and the 190, we had two heads on the 190, a 9.5 and a 10.5. The 10.5 kind of had to be a little bit weaker and yep. had, to, had to seek that you know, higher, higher handicap, lower swing speed guy, had a little bit more draw bias. Mm -hmm. The G, we couldn't go too far on the low spin yep. side just because we needed to catch the meat of the bell curve. Sure. Now with these three different heads, we can really push the extremes to the extremes. So the ST1, ST200 and the 9.5 and a 10.5 is a true playable 9.5, mm -hmm. 10.5. Very forgiving golf clubs, but still low spin. The G driver, yep. we could push even lower spin. So the weights, for example, this in its highest spin setting is similar to the 190G in its lowest spin setting. Wow. So we really can do a lot in terms of spin rate adjustment. And then the X on the opposite end of that allows us to have a true draw bias version built into just that head and not kind of masquerade and, and hidden within the yeah. ST190. So let's, let's, let's go to back to that G a second, because yes. I think there's going to be so many people who will hear what you just said about the spin and even in its most forgiven setting, that it's, that it's the new uh, setting is slightly low, lower spin than, than the last one. What does right. it do when it's all the way forward then? What, what, what RPMs are we yeah. talking and so change? What's, what's cool is we've been able to see between four and 500 RPM change wow. from all the way back to all the way forward, That's which in ton. previous versions, we'd see maybe 300, 350. Yeah. But with this new one, we actually extended the tracks a good ways yeah. for, more forward and a good ways more back. An interesting little subtle engineering thing we did is our weights on all of our previous versions entered from the rear. So they mm -hmm. entered from behind, meaning you couldn't get a true, really deep setting. Ah. With this one, you can actually enter see the weights the enter from the middle. Got it. So it allows you to do more extreme things. So by dropping it in the middle, you can really push that center of gravity back, which will increase the moment of inertia mm -hmm. and really it'll really make it more forgiving. But then if you shove it way forward, now you can just kill a ton of spin. Yeah. What did you see uh, with the high speed guys like Keith Mitchell? Did, were they kind of getting some extreme numbers? We when they really were. were. That? It's funny where, you know, Mizuno drivers, again, going back with some dirty laundry of us testing sure. with tour players in the past, we always struggled to be low enough in spin. So right. we'd always find ourselves kind of strengthening the loft a little yeah, bit, you know, yeah. kind of artificially knocking spin down. Right. With this one, it was so funny how many players we saw in the you know, mid thousands in spin, you wow. know, 1300 to 1500, which is, unless you got crazy ball speed, yeah. it's too low. Yeah. So we haven't seen one person have to play it all the way up, meaning wow. that we've got a lot of adjustability. And then if you're that true guy who mm -hmm. needs to kill a ton of spin, who really hits down on the ball, we can do that. Yeah. I mean, we get that all the time, Chris, and you, mm -hmm. you'll hear this and you're, you're aware of and, and, and kind of you know, see the forms enough to know that people are always looking at what shaft is going to kill the spin, right. what this is going to kill the spin. That alone to give people the extreme kind of promise of 500 RPMs less yeah. of, a, of an already low spin product right. is, is incredible. It was awesome. I, I use Luke Donald for an example because yeah. we were fitting him. So in the 190G, he had the weights all the way forward, which meant that he only had so much he could tweak because he actually is a player who on one week to the next, he, he'll adjust his driver slightly. He might add a little bit of loft or take a little bit off. Mm -hmm. But with the 190G, because the weights were all the way forward, there wasn't too far that he could go. Yeah. So he only had a little bit that he could work with. With the 200, on, on the other hand, he had the weights all the way back, hmm. which means he could add loft, knock loft off, he could increase spin, he could decrease spin. So wow. if you get it dialed in in that central location, then all of a sudden you've got a ton you can do for any given condition. Hmm. So over to the, the standard model, which was yes. our best seller in here. We, again, we used the G in extreme cases last year, but mm -hmm. we found that, that the majority of the people that we that fit really nicely into the driver, the 190 last year, they were in the standard model. So how, how sort of similar is this one? What are the subtle differences? So the main things we did different, again, the overall concept of the driver is the same as the yeah. 190. Super forgiving, low spin, yep. but one of the big changes we made, and actually lives across the entire line, mm -hmm. is the beta titanium yeah. face. So we use a different face material across all of these. 
Last year we used uh, what we called an SP700. Mm -hmm. That was a beta rich face, right. meaning that you get a little bit more ball speed from that beta titanium, but it was beta rich, meaning it was alpha and beta. Right. If I can get really into yeah, the technical yeah. no, side. That's good. I think that's good to explain what that means to be beta rich versus right. being full versus beta. Versus full beta, yeah. which these are. So you get even more extreme ball speeds right. from this. So you can get more ball speed for a given CT value, mm -hmm. which is great. So the good thing about that is you get more ball speed, but then we did a couple other subtle things too to adjust it as well. We made the head slightly larger, put a little bit more mm -hmm. mass back. Yep. So you have a larger moan of inertia. It's a more forgiving head. We tweaked the actual shape of the wave sole to give more performance mm -hmm. on more of the face. And overall, it's just a golf club that's gonna fit that real meat of the yeah. bell curve like you talked about. I think that's, again, just back to kind of this being a uh, an evolution from last year. This isn't this isn't something that's that's entirely new. This is more just okay. Here's here's a package that really worked. Mm -hmm. There's ways in which we can make it better in every which way. Right. Footprint, MOI, wave technology, material content on the yep. face, all those sorts of things. And and those are the one percents across the board that that, that you know come together to make a, a better product. You're exactly right. I mean, you'll hear us talk a lot from the engineering side, which is where I like to speak yeah, from. Is yep. We're never claiming crazy jumps in this. Yeah. Oh, this new technology is going to do this crazy thing because the USGA, the RNA, they're not yeah. going to allow that. Mm -hmm. It is those little bits, those one percents, those tweaks where if you can make it subtly more forgiving, subtly more ball speed, yeah. look better at address, have more adjustability, ultimately you're going to get a bigger gain out of that because those are the little bits that we can tweak mm -hmm. year over year and continue to improve. Love that. And then this year's uh, 200X. Yes, so that's the, this is the new one in the line is the mm -hmm. X. And the X is because this is actually a Japan authentic spec when right. we build this one. So we actually can see it's got a, a large back weight as well, but we also concentrated more mass in the heel mm -hmm. as well. So this is a true draw bias version. Right, okay. But what's the cool thing about it is a lot of those draw bias clubs, when you look at them at a dress, they look very hooky. Very and, sharp. Yeah. yeah, so this one looks very clean it at does. a dress actually. It really does. But we built in a number of things. The more mass here, mm -hmm. actually a subtle thing we actually do is we actually inboard the hosel slightly. So mm -hmm. there's actually a little bit more mass here, which just shortens that center of gravity to, to shaft axis distance to help you turn it over a little bit more. So there's some subtle things on this, but the cool thing is this as a finished product is yeah. gonna come with a super lightweight shaft, yeah. a super lightweight grip. Overall, just that for that guy who's looking to really get that ultimate lightweight Japan spec package. Yeah, and that seems to be a bit of an emerging market in North America. Are these J-spec models mm -hmm. coming over and um, obviously headway, it just just total package because you were saying grip weight's coming in about 30, 37, 37, I 37 believe, grams, yeah. uh, 39, 39 on the shaft, shaft yep. longer in the shaft and, mm -hmm. and just you know an overall package that allows people to kind of you know square the face, right. create a little bit more speed for free and, and but I think one thing, a competitive advantage that you've got there is you still have the adjustability with it. Right. Some of the other drivers that are falling in that category are not, are not adjustable, certainly the ones that we've seen. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's, that's going to be fantastic to still be able to kind of play with that a little You're more exactly and dial right. it in. There's still a little bit of fitting involved. And yeah. another thing that's a little bit of a competitive advantage on that as well is that it's at the same price point as the standard one, right. where you see a yeah, lot of the J-spec. When you true. get that super lightweight shaft, mm -hmm. that lightweight grip, the component costs go up yeah. significantly. Yeah. But we wanted to make sure that we could fit more players, so we actually are a little bit more competitive on the price point as yeah, well. That's a great point. And the shaft has been engineered in-house, so it you has. guys have, have taken you know, the, the, the profile of that and, and engineered it very specifically to work as a complete package. That's exactly right. It's more designed to be a finished good package, yeah. where the other two were designed really to be custom fit. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, love it. Let's dive into the, the metal wood. So again, yeah. same as last year we have in, the, in right hand, we have mm -hmm. a tour and we have a bonded version. That's right. So what, what subtle differences are we seeing in those? So a couple things we did on these. The first is similar to how we used a beta titanium to get a little bit more ball speed out of these. Mm -hmm. We had been using a very similar face material for generations of fairway woods. Okay. We had been using, we call it a 17-4 Mirage, no, yeah, Miraging steel mm -hmm. face. Uh, this year we actually went for, it's called an MAS-1C. It's a right. new material. It's a miraging steel as well, but it's a miraging steel that you could do more with. Right. We were a flat face before, mm -hmm. and now we actually have the new material as well as we've got some 
a variable thickness in there so we can dial in ball speeds across more of the face. So we have some very thin areas on the toe and heel, very thin up and down, just to get more consistency across the entire face. On top of that, we re-engineered the wave sole. Yeah. So it's a little bit more compact in shape, but a little bit more aggressive in terms of the actual geometry of it. Right, okay. That's gonna help us get more ball speed low on the face. And the footprint itself is actually a little bit deeper as well. So the footprint is gonna allow us to get a little bit more moment of inertia as well. So the whole idea behind this is just a very consistent mm -hmm. performing fairway wood all across the face. I know you guys had some very good testing with the yeah. 190. Yeah, we really did. It was, it was an extremely high ball speed. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and the tour version especially was extremely low spin. Right. I mean, it was for, for the player who needed that, that combination, especially if they had a little bit of a left miss going on, mm -hmm. that was just, it was, it was almost impossible for anything else to beat it. And that was the goal with the tour spoon is to make it a little bit more players, a little bit more with that fade bias yeah. built in, but still have the adjustability to get the loft that you need. Right. So the true differences between the tour spoon and the bonded, Obviously, there's the adjustable hosel. Sure. The bonded's not going to have that. This is going to come in a three wood only. Mm -hmm. And this head itself is a little bit shallower head. It's a little bit more of a player's profile. Yeah. This one's designed to get the ball up just a touch more. Okay. Excellent. So, so we've got our bonded version here. Mm -hmm. uh, any weight kind of differences from the front back CG wise? Have we got the CG a little further forward there? It's a touch for, touch more forward yeah. on the on the tour spoon yeah. just to really dial in that low swing. Okay. Uh, low swing. Uh, excuse me. Low spin rate. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot going on. There's a lot. A lot of tech going on. <laughs> so we're into we've got a new CLK product. Yes. Um, now I, I kind of knew a little bit about the woods. I know nothing about this new CLK <laughs> so I'm really keen to to kind of hear about it again love the look of it it's, it's it's super classic yeah this is our next version of the CLK and this is our previous one was really successful for yeah. us for almost three years That's running right, yeah. so with the CLK with that hybrid type golf club we're not looking for huge gains in distance or mm -hmm. huge gains in anything. We're looking for consistency. Right. And at the same time, we're looking for a golf club that's going to blend into whether you're trying to replace a fairway wood sure. or whether you're trying to replace a long, long iron. iron yeah. So with the new CLK, you can see it's actually a little bit different in terms of the look and the cosmetic. It's got this matte gray finish, mm -hmm. which it's not necessarily tied into the ST200 or not necessarily tied into the irons. Right. So it is a unique family. What we did do to try to uh, improve the performance of is we actually brought that same MAS-1C face I talked about from the SD200 mm -hmm. fairway. We brought that to this as well. So that's going to allow us more consistent ball speeds across the face as well okay. and a touch hotter than the previous one. Okay, a little more ball speed coming out of them. Correct. Good to know. Yeah, and then if you look at the actual wave sole itself, this one we got really aggressive. because <laughs> So on here, I talked about getting more compact. We yeah. actually got a little bit narrower. This one, the wave sole actually really exits stretched. all the way off. Yeah. <laughs> Because on this, you really want to make sure that you have consistency yeah. because this is a golf club that's designed to go a specific distance right, over and right. over again. Yeah. So what we tried to do is we got very aggressive on this first wave to make sure you got great ball speeds mm -hmm. low on the face, on the toe and heel. But what one of the bits of feedback we got from Tour was that the previous one, it wasn't the most stable. So on a center shot was really good, mm -hmm. but out of, you know, a little bit suspect lie or out of some rough or high on the face, it was, it tended to hit some bullet shots. Yeah, so those ones that would it. come in really hot really and release. Flat, yeah. So this footprint's actually a little bit deeper from front to back. We brought the center gravity back just a touch. Okay. So it's launches a little bit higher. I would say this will spin just a touch more than the previous version, but it should be more consistent as well. I really found that with the previous version that it was, that was, one that was a go-to for me for players who were creating sort of conditions that, you know, produced excess spin. Right. So I would always use CLK as, as kind of a way of just dulling that down a little yep. bit. So that's interesting to hear that that was a, a little subtle tweak uh, to the profile. Very cool. Well, I mean, there's there's nothing really left to do but but test it. Um, right. <laughs> you know, there's there's kind of we've we'll run through the the whole sort of family there and, and what we've got going on. So. We have obviously the lefty products for Matt to test today. Yes. We will do further testing at the PGA show with the, the righty product. I, I'm really curious to get some, some players that we know are extreme high spin mm -hmm. players and, and do some testing with the G. I think that's going to be fascinating to see that. Um, awesome. Okay. Great. Well, more to come on, uh, on this, guys. Lots, lots more to come. We're, we're really excited by it, so stay tuned.